Hello, media ethics students. Uh, welcome to the first of our for real video lectures. The last video lecture that I posted doesn't really count. It was only about the changes that the course has undergone because of COVID-19. By the way, you should go wash your hands. There's uh, instructions there. Uh, what we're going to do today is talk about some for real uh, actual lecture stuff. We're going to talk about literature reviews. And I'm going to be using Zoom to record this so I can switch between screens and show you all what you need to be doing uh, for that. That's going to take me a second to switch things over at times because uh, I'm still getting used to Zoom. So if you could just be a little patient with me sometimes, uh, that would rule. Hey, there we go. There's the PowerPoint. Okay. This is going to be a very quick tutorial on how to put together a literature review, or namely how to search for things in a literature review. So your next big step in the paper is putting together the literature review. Although there's not a specific deadline for it, uh, it is a big part of the paper, and it's something that I'm gonna be putting a little emphasis on when I grade. Uh, so I do want you to take it seriously. Uh, now, first of all, we just need to think about, all right, well, what are the reasons that we have a literature review to start with? What's the point of it existing in this study that you're writing? The first reason is to show how your work, the thing that you're doing, fits within the bigger picture, right? So if, if we think about all human knowledge, especially human knowledge about the ethics of various forms of mass media as a puzzle, some of you, you have been doing puzzles in your time off, uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if we think about that as, as, a, as a puzzle, what you are arguing is how your study is a piece that fits within the larger puzzle of work that's already been done. So the different pieces of the puzzle are other studies, other pieces of research, other critiques, other analyses, uh, and each of them have their own individual focus. What you are saying with your literature review is how your study fits uh, within that larger picture. So the whole puzzle, once it's completed, is our understanding of an ethical question in mass communication. You are contributing a small piece to a very big question. You're also, in, as a part of doing this, making the case as to why your research is the piece that's supposed to go there. Uh, you are talking about, based on other people's work, where your question comes into play, where maybe they didn't look at something under a specific angle, you're gonna be looking at it in that specific angle. Number two reason why you do a literature review is because you need to inform yourself, the researcher, about what has been done in the past, what work has been done outside of just what you uh, are doing yourself. Uh, so this can be helpful in a lot of ways. One, I think it's really important to think about this in terms of it helping terminology. It could be that you're looking for things under a certain term, but it may exist outside of that in other terms. I have a good example of that personally here in a second. Uh, number two is that it's helpful because you can hear both sides of the argument. Remember, I, from the beginning, I have emphasized that you need to be talking about and writing about in your research paper your ethical conundrum as a conundrum, as a question. And so you wanna look and see what has been studied and what has been said about both sides of this ethical question. And then number three is the ability to discover alternate approaches. Maybe it's that this question has been thought about in an entirely different way that you've never thought about before. You won't know that until you read what other people have written about this topic. So as an example for number one there with understanding terminology, I was doing some research where I was looking at the ethics of uh, the filter bubble. The filter bubble is this idea that uh, the algorithms that social media and increasingly news websites use to feed you stuff that they know you want to see uh, is based on a sort of uh, handing over personal data, whether we know it or not, uh, to data collection sites uh, and, or social media sites selling our data off to those kind of sites. And some academics call this filter bubble, and I called it filter bubble, so I was researching stuff involving the filter bubble. But then I realized that when I was searching that some academics don't call it that. They call it siloing. If somebody ends up in social media only seeing stuff they agree with, uh, we, we would say that they are siloed. Two different academic terms that mean the exact same thing but are used differently by different researchers. I would have never known that if not for digging up some old research. 
So as a part of that, what you need to do is look for major works that involve your specific topics. And the reason why the S and topic is underlined there is because each one of your ethical questions involves not just one topic, but multiple topics. So to do that, you really have to think about what your topics actually are. So for example, if you're one of the people doing research on the ethical question of paparazzi and celebrity privacy, your different topics could be celebrities in general and celebrities in privacy. Even, that, even though that question, celebrities and privacy, doesn't necessarily have to do anything with paparazzi, you might wanna look at it by itself. Looking at paparazzi as a whole as well, looking at if there are established professional photojournalism ethics. Those three things are different from one another, but searching them differently into search, into search engines and uh, research databases, more on that in a second, uh, will be really helpful. So you need to break down your individual topics first before you start searching. You're often going to discover that different topics uh, exist by reading other people's literature reviews. So when you are finding these studies and you're finding this research through these search engines and through these data search sites, uh, you're gonna want to keep in mind that if you scan, you don't have to read it and take notes on it, but if you at least read it enough to scan other people's literature reviews, you may find terminology and topics you would have never discovered otherwise. Also, I am asking that uh, you try to find a fair amount of peer-reviewed research. Peer-reviewed research means that it has either been published in an academic journal uh, or it has been presented at an academic conference. Hey, look at that person right there presenting that academic work. Uh, those two things, I will show you how to check for those here in a second. And keep in mind, there's no such thing as stealing research as long as you cite it. Uh, there's going to be a follow-up presentation here in a little bit that is talking about APA style, which is the American Psychological Association. They have an established system for citing other work in text as well as in a, uh, a bibliography at the end of the paper, uh, and I will show you all how to do that. But just keep in mind, there's if you take in a whole bunch of research and cite it in your paper, that's fine as long as you cite it. Uh, to quote our good friend Isaac Newton, if I have seen further than others is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. That means that when you go in to do research, know that you're not going to change the world with one study, but what you're doing is going to add a little bit to pre-existing understanding of research. Okay, so with that, let's switch things over to actually how we find uh, this research to start with. Hey, it's back on my face now. Uh, there are two places where I'm going to want you to look for your pre-established uh, studies. Let's get that out of here and let's go back over here and let's go share screen and let's share the screen over right here. Yes, haha, -ha, I have mastered this software. Uh, the first of the two places I'm going to ask for you to look at for established literature or established research for your literature reviews is Google Scholar. Google Scholar can be found at scholar.google.com. Uh, leave it set to articles instead of case law. And here's where you can search for your terms. So in this case, maybe I want to type in paparazzi, if I can learn to spell it correctly. Oh, look, even one of the suggested terms is paparazzi and privacy. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Uh, and this is going to give you tons of research that already exists involving uh, the uh, terminology of paparazzi and privacy. So down here we can see one that is, look for 2005, privacy princesses and paparazzi. Uh, let's click on that. And as it loads, look at that. We have uh, the, uh, we have the study here. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that if you're going to be doing this off campus, which because uh, of COVID-19, you most assuredly are going to be doing it off campus, you might be better served if you find stuff here that's behind a paywall, copy and paste the title of it into the website uh, for the library, right? So the Georgia Southern University Library is the second place I'm going to suggest you look. Sometimes it may be that if you find a study through Google Scholar that's behind a paywall, you can copy and paste either the title of the article or the authors into the Search Georgia Southern Library resources here, uh, 
search bar, you can copy and paste that in and see if it pops up there. If you run into a problem where a study that you really need is behind a payroll paywall and you don't know how to get to it, let me know. I have ways and I will get you the study. Uh, the second way, other than Google Scholar, that I want to suggest is down here. So go to the uh, A to Z databases for uh, all databases under the Georgia Southern Library website. Click on C. And as we scroll down, we are looking for communication and mass media complete. Do, 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 do. There we go. Computer, uh, communication and mass media complete. This is through EBSCOhost. I will need to log in apparently so that it believes who I am. Uh, as it loads, which will take at least a second or two, you will end up here at EBSCOhost communication and mass media complete. As a matter of fact, let's just take paparazzi and privacy from uh, our other search and just drop that in here in search. And we will see that this database has tons of stuff involving communication and mass media that involves paparazzi and privacy issues. So if that was your topic, this is where you might search. These two areas, the EBSCOhost uh, search that is called communication and mass media complete, as well as Google Scholar are the two places that I suggest you look when you are uh, putting together your literature review. Uh, the literature review, what I'm looking for out of you when I'm gonna be grading, uh, looking for when I grade this is that you have shown that you have spent some time looking at past work involving this topic or these topics that you're researching. So that's it for now. Uh, that is the uh, idea of literature reviews and that is the two databases that I would like to show you all. This is kind of mimicking those presentations I was planning on doing after your group presentations in class, but since they're not group presentations, I'll have to do them uh, like this. Uh, so with that, let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing your eventual uh, literature reviews.